Example 133. Tests of the effectiveness of echinacea in preventing upper respiratory infections in children were conducted in double-blind studies. Days of fever was one criteria used to test the effectiveness of echinacea. Among 337 children treated with echinacea, the mean number of days with fever was 0.81, with a standard deviation of 1.5 days. Among 370 children given a placebo, the mean number of days of fever was 0.64, with a standard deviation of 1.16 days. Use a 5% significance level to test the claim that an echinacea affects the number of days with fever. What is the p-value for the test? All right, so based on this phrase and right here, this phrase, the 5% significance level to test the claim and the phrase, what's the p-value for the test? And this tells me it's a hypothesis test and they want us to use the p-value to do that. Our first step in hypothesis testing is to express the claim. So let's do that here for this problem. So I'm gonna write up here our claim. And it says very clearly to test the claim that echinacea affects the number of days. But what does that mean, affects? It means that the number of days with fever is not the same when you're on echinacea as opposed to when you're off echinacea. So what we're going to say here is that the mean while using echinacea is not equal to the mean for the placebo group. The placebo group you know, is not getting treated at all, and we would expect that those means are different if echinacea in fact works. If it isn't just a placebo effect when people take the, the herb, then we should expect that the mean when on echinacea is different than the one for placebo. Now you may want to say that the mean is less than, that might have been your inclination, but that's not what the statement here says. It just says effects. It doesn't say how it affects it. It could make the fever last longer or it could make it last shorter. We don't know based on this statement. So we're just going to say not equal to. They're not the same. Okay, so once we have the claim, our next step then is to go ahead and do the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis. All right, so looking at the symbol that the claim is using, a not equal to symbol, that would make HA and the claim the same here. And for HO, we're going to go ahead and use equal to in that case. The opposite of not equal to, in other words, right? Okay, so there's our pair of competing hypotheses. You know, you could write this hypothesis or pair of hypotheses a little differently by moving this value over, right? So let's just remind ourselves that this is really the same as this statement. They are equivalent. Right, because what's this saying? It's just saying the difference between these two is not equal to zero. When would it be equal to zero? Well, it would be equal to zero if they were exactly the same, but since we say they are different, the diff their difference is not equal to zero. You can do that algebraically by just moving this guy over here. When you do that and you cross the inequality symbol, you change the sign of the item that you're moving over. So this thing that was positive becomes negative on this side. There's nothing left over on the right-hand side, so it puts a zero there. And so using a little algebra, you can transfer, transfer the statement from this one to this one and vice versa, right? All right, either way, but those are our claim. That's our claim, that's our HO, that's our HA. Our next step is to really write the data down. So I'm gonna do that in two columns. Since I made my echinacea group first, I'm going to put that data first, and then I'm going to put the placebo group second. This is what you should do whenever you do one of these problems. Pick an order. So you use echinacea first here, then you everything goes first with the echinacea group. It'll go first in the data set, it'll go first in your test stat formula, so on and so forth. If you put placebo first, then you put the placebo first here, you put the placebo first in your test stat formula. Okay, so let's write down this information. We have the n, we're gonna have a sample mean, we're going to have some kind of a standard deviation or a variance in the problem, and then ultimately down at the bottom we'll have a significance level, right? So let's do that for this problem and see what we come up with. Okay, so the end for the echinacea. So it says, among 337 children treated with echinacea. So 337, it says the mean number of days with fever was 0 0.81 with a standard deviation of 1.5 days. The end here is 370 for the placebo group. It says the mean number of days for that group was only 0 0.64 and the standard deviation is 1.16. The alpha, they say, is 5%, 0 0.05. Okay, so you have your values for your test stat. So we're going to use these numbers in our test stat formula. We'll choose Z because the sample sizes are both very large, right? 
And the formula is pretty straightforward. We're going to take the differences of the sample means. So we're just going to do, in this case, x bar for echinacea and subtract off x bar for placebo. Remember, echinacea first, like we did it here first, like we did it there first. If you chose placebo first, you would put placebo first here and placebo first here. All right, then we need the denominator of the test stat. It's that big square root that we've been dealing with lately. So we'll have the s for echinacea squared divided by the n for echinacea plus the s for the placebo group squared divided by the n for the placebo group. Okay, let's fill in the numbers then for our test stat here. Filling in the numbers we'll have for the sample means um, 0 0.81 minus 0 0.64 on top, then we'll divide that all by the square root. Our square root here is going to be the standard deviation for the echinacea group, 1.5 squared, divided by its sample size, which is 337, plus the standard deviation for the placebo, which is 1.16 quantity squared, divided by its sample size, which is 370. That's our formula. Let's work it out in the calculator. And just before we go there, I want to mention something. This formula normally has a little minus d sub 0. And d sub 0 is the number that you would find in the null hypothesis if there's one given. So when we pulled this over here, there was nothing left, so we put a 0, right? There's nothing left on the other side. But had there been something left over, like we had the mean for the echinacea group minus the placebo group is equal to 10, then that number 10 would have gone here. In most of our problems, it'll be 0, so I've left it out here. Okay, so let's go ahead and fill in the rest of the formula then using our calculator, get our answer for that. So we're going to have in the top of the fraction 0.81 minus 0.64, close it up, divide by the square root, and the square root here is going to be 1.5 squared divided by 337 plus 1.16 squared divided by 370. Close all that up, hit enter, and when you're done, you get 1.674-ish, right? So approximately 1.674. I'm just going to round it off, though, to 1.67. It's important when you're asked to find the p-value in a problem that you make sure that you take this number out to two decimal places only because we're going to be using a z-chart to look this number up, and it only has two decimal places after the decimal point. All right, so we have our number 1.67. We're now going to take that and put it on a drawing. That's how to find the p-value, right? So we're going to do a little drawing of the bell curve up here. And the procedure is very simple here. We're going to put this test stat on the curve first. So I'm put 1.67 to the right because it's bigger than zero, obviously, since it's positive. I'll draw a line here. And the rule for a two-tailed test, and I know that because I see that HA is not equal to, so for a two-tailed test, the rule is very simple. You find the tail area beyond the test stat, and you double it. So let's go to our Z chart, let's look up 1.67, find that area, and then we'll take that result, and we will double it. So here we're looking at 1.67 on our Z chart. So I'm going to move the chart just a little bit to see the 1.6 line. And now we're going to look over until we see the seventh column. That's going to be the second to the last. So we're looking at this value here, 0 0.4525, 0 0.4525. Okay, so we found the answer to be 0 0.4525, 0 0.4525. Now from there, we need to find the tail area. So the area from the table is the area from the line here to the center. The tail area is going to be 0 0.5000, or 50% for the whole half of the curve, minus 0.4525. And right, once we do that subtraction, we'll end up with the answer 0 0.0475. Now that's the area in the tail, but because this is a two-tail test, we have to double it. So the p-value ultimately becomes twice 4.75 percent, so we'll end up with 0 0.0950 or 9.5 percent. Now compare that to alpha. Alpha is only 0 0.05 percent, and so the question we'll need to ask is which one of these numbers is larger? Well, the p-value is larger than alpha here. Whenever your p-value is larger than alpha, you're going to say do not reject. HO and therefore you do not support HA. So 
looking at our claim and asking which uh, hypothesis the claim was the same as in this problem, in this case it was the same as the alternative, so we're going to use this wording, that we do not support the claim. So that's our final wording, the sample data does not support the claim. So the sample data, sample data does not support, does not support the claim. And what is the claim here? And what does this mean ultimately to say that we don't support it? Well, the claim is that, that the mean for the echinacea group is not equal to the mean for the placebo group. So if we say we don't support that idea, it means that we can't say they're different from one another. And if we can't say they're different from one another, we're basically saying that echinacea, so let's write that down, echinacea works no better than than a placebo. No better than a placebo. So no better than a sugar pill, right? So essentially the idea that echinacea will uh, change the amount of fever that a person has or the length of time that a person has a fever, um, that doesn't seem to be true in this study. So we're going to say that it works no better in regard to that measure of health than a placebo does.